Southeast Turkey, October 1994. While plowing his field, shepherd Safak Yildiz spots a strangely shaped stone emerging from the parched earth. When he brushes away the dirt, he realizes the stone may be part of a much larger object. After reporting his find, he is visited by archaeologist Klaus Schmidt and a team from the German Archaeological Institute. Further excavation reveals the stone is actually part of a massive, elaborately carved stone pillar, one in what turns out to be dozens that form an ancient underground complex. Gebekli Tepe is arguably the most important archaeological discovery in recent years. We're talking about a whole series of stone circles built on the top of a mountain. If you can imagine Stonehenge in England, but multiply it by 20 times and have these stones in circles facing towards two massive great monoliths, as much as 18 and a half feet tall, weighing between 15 and 20 tons. This is what we see at Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe could very well be the first lost civilization. We've only uncovered a small percentage of it, like 10 or 15%. We have no idea really how much bigger this is and what else we're gonna find there. But we have to ask ourselves, could Gobekli Tepe been a place of commerce and trade? And I think the answer is an undoubted yes, because its construction would have necessitated the presence of not just hundreds, but many thousands of people coming from across the region who, at the beginning, were hunter-gatherers. While there are many theories, the true purpose of Gobekli Tepe remained shrouded in mystery. But no less mysterious than the stones themselves is the lost civilization that fashioned them. Because when sediment layers of the site were carbon dated, it was shockingly revealed that Gobekli Tepe is more than 12,000 years old. Gobekli Tepe really did send shockwaves through the whole world of early prehistory because we'd never before known or imagined even that simple hunter-gatherers could produce such spectacular monumental structures as, as I found at Gobekli Tepe. Now, many of these pillars also have remarkable carvings on them, wonderful carvings and bas-reliefs of animals, birds, insects, all kinds of things. So to fashion those and carve them and set them up in these structures was just absolutely amazing. More than one third of Gobekli Tepe's stone pillars contain elaborate bas-relief carvings of various animals. But what has many archeologists and historians puzzled is that many of the species depicted, like geese and armadillos and wild boar, are not indigenous to the area. That location just happens to be near where Noah and the animals in the ark ended the long journey through the flood. And these giant pillars in Gobekli Tepe have carvings of animals, many different kinds of animals. Are these the animals from the ark? Did the stories about those animals end up being depicted in stone? Could there really be a connection between Gobekli Tepe and the Great Flood? Perhaps. But according to another audacious theory, the animal carvings at Gobekli Tepe may have been inspired by another, even older, biblical story. Gobekli Tepe is located in the very area that the Bible tells us the Garden of Eden was located. It is said that Eden was where the four rivers of paradise took their rise. Two of those rivers were the Euphrates and the Tigris that flowed through Mesopotamia. And these both rose in the same area as Gebekli Tepe. Professor Klaus Schmidt, the German archeologist, even suggested himself that this could be the area of Eden and the point of foundation 
of civilization 